This is fun. So fun. It yeah. is. So I'm just going to do a okay, cool. intro. Thank you to everybody joining us for the Ask Are- the first Ask Arena Live after show. <laughs> what, what? This is like big. And I have to thank Paul for this because I don't Absolutely. think otherwise I would have thought to do this. I always kind of inherently wanted to do it. Like we, I feel like we've yeah. talked about this for years, right? We have. I mean, you know, we live tweet a lot afterwards anyway. Uh, right. Like me and Sarah. So it was like, why not go ahead and talk and share it? And maybe people can jump in and watch. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. It's awesome. Yeah. So guys, I mean, where do we go with this? I think first off, I think it's cool to just hip everybody to like why us three right because it's like a random pairing so maybe paul you should start by talking a little bit about how you even got here because i think it's cool i mean you were just a what you were just a an attendee of ask arena live some years ago and look oh at, yeah look um, at us now look at us now well i'm a super creepy uh stalker person and I did I I think I slid in the DMs like low key. <laughs> and I was working at the time I was working on a project. Yeah. And um and I wanted to get some feedback on whether or not it made sense to like try to monetize the software I was thinking about making. Mm. And so I reached out. And I was like, hey, you know, would you buy this? Because it was something with marketing and metrics or something mm-hmm. like that. And we started talking in DMs. And I think you were at a conference in Atlanta. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could be there. And I was definitely in Alabama. And I never knew this. Yeah, I was, I was like, definitely, I was in Huntsville. Yeah. I had actually um, just decided to be a full-time entrepreneur. So I had just turned, like, my job offer down with the government. Like a week before, I was at my friend's house staying in his room because I didn't have any place because my lease had just ended. Wow. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Atlanta and I'm just going to tell her like, yeah, I'll be in the area. And then I definitely got up that morning and drove <laughs> to a hotel you were at. And I had like my last, I had I didn't even have like any money for real. I spent like my last money paying I for. Am, this story is the best. For like the parking lot. I never knew this. Yeah, yeah. And, um. And then we just hit it off. And then after that, you know, I don't know, the rest is history. The rest is history. I knew, yeah. so like, I knew none of this that you were like broke. I, I, I knew no. none of this. I also, it's exclusive. It's the first show. I know, right? But I like, I feel after, like, wow. After show confessions, yo. Yeah. Wow. Seriously, because I was like, I mean, when he asked to come and I was like, well, that's cool. So yeah, like totally come through. But then like the introvert in me was like, this is kind of weird. I hope he doesn't try right. to kill me, but we're going to meet in the <laughs> Starbucks. So I think yeah. I'm pretty safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, definitely. Super safe, super safe. Yeah. I was just really excited to talk to somebody um, because I was trying to figure out what marketing and, and stuff like that. So it was really great. And uh, yeah, and after that I was like, She's going to be my friend. She just doesn't know it yet. Ah, See, super creepy right? stuff. Super <laughs> creepy stuff. It's funny but, now. But if I said that we in the make, meeting, it would have been Yeah, but that's creepy. how we make friends as adults. Like, you kind of yeah. have to decide, you know what? I like this person's vibe. I'm going to make them my friend. Like, we were, so, we were so willing to do that at, like, eight and nine years old. And now we grown people. And we yep. turn it into some kind of creepy thing. But for real, like, that's, that's how you make friends. You just got to be like, yeah, I like this person vibe and i'm a you know lovingly stalk them and make them my friend like that's that's, that's the vibe yeah that's it that's I love how it. we got cool sarah i just found out sarah we didn't even know each other's names we still you know talking to each other in twitter handles i was like yo what up blurred like we didn't really yeah. know and then <laughs> just started having conversations Again, yeah. just DM conversations and, and comments. You liked me on my favorite Ratchet TV. So I was like, oh, yeah. we going to It's cool. a match made cool. in heaven because she's the pop, yeah, yeah, she pop, pop yeah. culture queen of HR. Like, I, I do what I do. I do what I do. Yeah. I was watching um, Black Ink Crew 
before I on my DVR before I logged in <laughs> to watch as I, I read a lot. I I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I gotta keep it ratchet. I have to. I you gotta keep it, it ratchet and then you come I got on to. and we're talking about, you know, neurons and dendrites. Neuron neurological you could do both. Janine, you, you could do can. both. Black people are not a monolith. We got right. we can do right. all these Especially things. Especially us nerds. They be trying to trip on us. Right. There's Look, I got Pokemon Go on my phone right now. I'm just saying. What? Is that still a thing? They said it's dead. I heard it's dead. I don't. My kids still play it from time to time. I don't okay. think it's I as think popular it as it was. But yeah, they still they still get it on some Pokemon Go. When we go places, it's weird. It's like they'll open it up and be like, let me see if I grab some Pokemon real quick. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. So I do I do think okay. it's still a thing. I got ner- I got nerdy kids, you know that. So yes, they are. I, well I have I have nerdy adult friends. And so I deleted Pokemon because my phone at the time was really bad. And then they kind of just peer pressure me into putting it so i just put it back on like new year or something i just put it back on my phone because they're like really in it they're like level 25 level 30 like it's it's real gamers yeah. the love they're the gamers so sarah i want you to kind of introduce how you and i've been rocking forever that's my sister forever yo forever so we start Started our blogs within like six months of each other mm-hmm. and in typical fashion people immediately told us not to like each other like I remember that like I remember people being like oh you gotta watch out you know this arena of HR is is here now and you know like this is only only room for, for exactly. one of us so now right. Nikki and Cardi we Nikki have to have, have yeah we gotta have a Hamilton style duel to the death <laughs> when we walk in and he gets, he's like no so we were like forget that we're gonna be friends and I, th- I think we scheduled a call that was only supposed to be for 30 minutes ended up on the phone both of us at work for at least an hour if not more y'all should yeah, and <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. So Use a company asset. Like, <laughs> Use a co- yeah. Shady shit. Co- and terrible. We don't work at neither one of those That's places. That's what I was going to say. And both of y'all had to nah, leave and do work. your own thing. Cause we had to do our own thing. So, and have just like been friends. That Yeah, absolutely. We are sisters. That is my blog FF. I'm ride i'm riding till the wheels fall off with my chime like that's it so yeah. it is wonderful just to watch everybody blossom and grow and to just prove all the, the you know haters and naysayers wrong like we're not going to be at odds with each other we are we're going to be friends we're going to support each other y'all can do what you want but they'll be doing so i love it ah, i love it i'm just glad to be at the table now like i didn't know all that yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, nah, so. so actually I, her um the buzz on hr that was like one of my first features ever like it was one of the first places that i had ever contributed to an article it was like a big deal for me at the time you know and she was just so cool and back then we all were writing under pen names so you didn't know who was who right like wow. at all so i didn't know whether she was a woman or a man Gotcha. That's right, because I was still yeah. Buzz Rooney. Yeah, because she was Buzz Rooney, and so when like, I found I out, I was like, she's is. a black girl? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> like, this is amazing! <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, man. So what would you guys think about this whole neural tech stuff? Yo, I just... It reminds, like, when you started talking about... It reminded me of, like, that movie Limitless, when you started talking about the people Want to um, wanting to you know improve their intelligence, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, there there's a reason why we evolve slowly, and I think trying to accelerate that just has so many dangers for the person, you know, as an individual, yeah. and then the amount of data we collect already to think that now we could be collecting neurological data and what do we do with that? And how, how they, we go find a way to use it to oppress people. So <laughs> how do we get out in front of that yeah. to make sure that you know, black and brown people don't end up more disenfranchised 
um, and marginalized than they already are as we start to make this shift. Like listening to you, you know, the, the developers of the technology right now, the group you were talking about, you know, they're Nigerian, they're Indian. Yeah, so but who it's is, like a Wakanda yeah. situation, I feel. Yeah, that I feel like, but it's only a matter of time for people come trying to steal your vibranium, though, you know? So, right. I, yeah, it, it, it all, it, it sounds super, you know, science fiction and, and very, you know, a lot of potential for good. I mm-hmm. will say that. But there's always those, you know, misuses. And I just feel like there's a lot of, of room for that. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's a trend to keep watching because it's the next level. Like all of this stuff that we're doing with AI and home automation and wearable tech, at some point they're going to want you to, to swallow something. Or, you know, right. insert. I remember reading an article not mm-hmm. long ago about that, that job. I forget where it was, but they, had, they were chipping people in order to mm-hmm. supposedly get access to areas of the building and then come to find out they were actually like tracking their movements outside of work and a woman got fired being somewhere she wasn't supposed to be, or at least in the company's opinion, somewhere she wasn't supposed to be behind a microchip that they had stuck in her neck or something. So it's all of that kind of stuff. And now you got my thoughts and other things that's going on in my body. Oh, just the potential for misuse and abuses is huge. Yeah, no, I definitely, I agree. I feel like we can't handle text data of that magnitude currently let alone neurological data, right? So mm-hmm. you look at, um, all right, I'm going to use the Kevin Hart situation, right? This is something that happened years ago. He already apologized for. It cost him the Oscars today because everyone didn't know about the fact that he had already apologized for it, right? Mm-hmm. But they were able to skew it because they say these are his real tweets. Even though he has said a million times he doesn't think that way. He says that he's grown as a person, so forth and so on. What ends up happening is you have this hard evidence. Even if he did apologize on the same medium and platform, whoever wants to focus on that negative thing can. And I don't, I see that being augmented with this feeling, um, neurotech. Uh, It's going to be a situation where, you know, almost the same thing, except you go, man, these are your thoughts. How many thoughts do you have like in a day that you don't actually let come out of your mouth. And now all of those looks that you have, your job will be able to kind of monitor and know. And like, that's, uh, I don't know. I mean, so as a researcher, it's really cool. And I can understand working in that space, just being excited about having something done, focusing mostly on the positive, but Whenever you have this kind of technology, there's going to be someone, even if they pretend that they're there for their good, that's going to be looking at how can they monetize it. This is a weapon, Um, whether it's for HR or whether it's for actual warfare, um, it's a weapon. And so it it won't be very long before it becomes taken over and, and policed. I mean, even the Internet is becoming super privatized now. Like, I can't watch all of my favorite movies on an aggregator like Netflix anymore because Disney realized that they're not getting a piece of the pie. Yeah. Um, the internet is being really weirdly divvied up, right? And net neutrality has been pretty much abolished, uh, more or less, yeah. because cable companies are like, man, these young kids are making Netflix and Facebook. And I think they were saying like Netflix is... I want to say like a third or some, I don't quote me on the exact, I think it's like 30% of all the U S internet traffic right now. Mm -hmm. And so you have these companies that are like, we're getting any piece of this. We've got to change up the game. And so whenever you create new technologies in a way where there can be gatekeepers, you're going to have some kind of danger. And I know like Elon Musk and a couple other guys are saying like stuff like AI needs to be open sourced, especially if you're starting to talk about these brain replicators because so many things have happened already. Um, Mm -hmm. There have been a couple of instances where with AI, um, they've trained two computers to communicate with each other in the most efficient way ever, and they tried to put the safety protocol that had to be in in English or in human-readable language. And even in that, the computers figured out ways to create a code using like I 
five times to mean something and the word the four times to mean something. Mm -hmm. And they had to actually pull the plug because they weren't able to understand what the computers were saying to each other. And this has happened in a couple of different labs already. So even when we set up these pretend uh, things, I, I mean, I feel like it's going to be like a combo of like I, robot, and yeah. uh, you know what I mean? And, and, and like Terminator. Yeah, I, I mean, I think my cons my concern is like now it's like because and you know this well we talk about this all the time because of our startup experience, everything mm -hmm. is about you know how how what's the next big thing and how much money can I pour into it right? So suddenly you find these sectors with millions if not billions of money being poured into it, we get way way down the pipe way down the pike of making these things and then we start to realize like oops what about these moral concerns oops ethical concerns mm -hmm. and now now we want to talk about governance of course yeah. right like even if we talk about blockchain for instance mm -hmm. still something that's in the works but we let it get way down the pike and it's only now only like last year that countries you know like here started saying well wait hold up Mm -hmm. this is looking like it's gonna threaten treasury or something treasury. Like, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, we yeah. gotta get some governance mm -hmm. around it you know and yeah. like why aren't we talking about the governance before we start pouring money in it or why aren't we looking at what makes most sense from an ethical standpoint before we go down these roads like it's like break the rules then come up with the ethical standard yeah, I hate that because I just think that's so backwards. Like we, the ethics have to be a factor the entire way, whether it's whatever, whenever we're making evolution and, and transitions in terms of the technology we use. I just, I wish we as a, as a people, a human, you know, race who wants to advance and, and feel like we're immortal to some extent. I just wish that we would do a better job of, of those ethical considerations earlier in the processes and making sure that we as we're going along with these developments are putting the safeguards in place to make sure we're not you know it's it makes it difficult for the evil to seep in you know over what the thing was intended to do but instead we will wait until stuff is completely out of control or very close to being completely out of control or is threatening to collapse some other really important thing like blockchain and the treasury. Like y'all didn't see this coming. And I just, cause the rest of us did, like the rest of us was like, oh wow, this is gonna, this can completely revolutionize the way money works. And if we're not gonna do that with neurological advances in technology, and how we test and track people like we what the hell have we learned from all of these lessons that you know we supposedly already been taught with, with all of these other debacles it's just it's like we get smarter but we still but common sense still ain't common we still we still don't catch on to that other stuff no and i, I think go ahead oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead no and i was gonna say you know from a very I mean, not to be religious or anything like that, but still, you know, there's, there's this, we, we overlook the fact that like perhaps, just maybe, whatever is responsible for our existence, whatever you believe, doesn't really want for us to tap into these things. Like maybe we're just like stepping our toe into things that we ought <laughs> not to, right? And like these were discussions I mean, we were having, I was having discussions like this in the early 2000s when I took bioethics. But at that time, we were merely talking about, you know, genetic engineering and biotech, right? That was like the, the precipice of when that started hitting market and stuff like that. Now, we've far exceeded that, you know, and the same considerations are the same. It's like, no matter what you tap into or what you believe, like at what point do we say to ourselves, like perhaps there's a reason, maybe we just shouldn't, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter what the market's gonna look like, maybe we just shouldn't. Like 
there are these um, eye contacts that they, they're starting to prototype mm-hmm. that are supposed to be like Black Mirror, the show, or one of those shows mm-hmm. where basically nothing you see is exactly like we would be accustomed to seeing, right? It's like you'd be able to walk up on somebody and it would say, that's Paul McNair. He went to school at blah, 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 blah. He lives at this address. Like, you know, at that level of perception, and I'm one of those people that believes in the powers that be and then and then and then, what am I going to see? Am I prepared for this? I don't know that I'm prepared to see these things. I don't know if I, yeah. like, yeah. let me pray and not, and know that they're there and not see. I don't know that I'm ready to see. I don't want to see. Yeah. It. I don't know. I think, I mean, I think that what, what's going to happen to you, um, which will be really interesting is you're going to see more ethics, pro, um, ethics, courses in these engineering programs and things of that nature because like Mm -hmm. like you said so bioethics and biology i think and psychology and things of that nature um a lot of social sciences they really do stress that like i mean i went through i don't know how many years of school i have not taken an ethics class to this day so anything i do is cool it's up to my judgment um (laughs) but also but, but I also think that part of it, too, comes from the type of people that do create these technologies are often uh, things people and not people people. Yeah. So you become enamored with the field because you really love the thing. You love not having to be around people. You love not having to think about people. Mm-hmm. I want to know if I press this button, if I can get this electric current to do a thing. I want to, oh, I figured that out. What's the next step? And so it's very, so what can I do? What can I do? And not necessarily how does it affect? I've been in courses and a situation where, um, so I started off as like a pure math major before I got into all this applied stuff. And I had a math teacher. She would teach us some stuff in calculus and then say, uh, and then we kind of stop here because we're just mathematicians. And uh, I think engineers do something with it, but this is our part. This is what we do. And I think that this idea of these silos, as we're getting more interdisciplinary, we have to do a better job of also spreading those, um, those ethics cross um, disciplines, especially in those where it hasn't really been the focus. Because when you think this is, this is our part, my part is just to make AI happen. My part is just to make the chip that does the thing there's going to be another person that comes later. If we don't start training everyone to think holistically in terms of the entire system, um, it's going to get really, really scary. I mean, that's why we have um, government that's now thinking about what does, what is privacy and you have people thinking about it that don't fully understand the technology that they're making the laws about. Um, and I, I know this last election round, there are a lot of younger people and more diverse people, which is really cool. And I think that that's as we start seeing a wider or more diverse senates and, and government, we're going to be able to see laws change in a really effective, a better, more effective way. Um, because if you have somebody who's supposed to hold Zuckerberg uh, feet to the fire on privacy, but they don't understand that Facebook made all of its money off of ads like that. What, right. what, how are we going to really govern? How are we going to set these things in place? So um, it's going to be interesting to see how this next generation that's growing up in a newly segmented technological uh, world um, is going to be able to operate and what kind of partnerships come from that and what kind of rules and what they see um, because it's very different than our world, you know, like, I think I was among the last to like play outside, you know, yeah. uh, and so mm-hmm. it's, it's one of those things where I think I have a lot of the tech there, but my little cousin remember a world where cell phones didn't always have unlimited data plans, right? right. Not even unlimited text, right. not even 10 cents cents Eve, but just. And so the next generation, of course, I would talk to things. They're going to watch those clap on, clap off things. Like, why would you why work would so you hard? Do that? Right. Alexa. Alexa in my house. Yeah, I just got, yeah. Alexa, I got the home. fire cube over the holiday. 
and um, my daughter's learning prime numbers. And mm -hmm. hell if, look, it all comes back eventually, but I was like, girl, you have to give yeah. mommy a second. That's a long time ago. She mm -hmm. was not satisfied for the time that I needed to dig in the archives. She's like, right. I'm gonna ask Alexa. And she just goes downstairs, she goes, Alexa, is 34 a prime number? And she goes, no, it is not. I was like, well, tell Alexa, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> Save mm -hmm. me. <laughs> That's tech <Yeah>. for good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see that aspect and I'm excited to see how it forces us to grow um, as people mm -hmm. uh, because just social media and this large storage of data has forced people to have very real conversations about a lot of topics because you can't hide from things, right? Like 10, 15 years ago, what happened to um, whatever happened 10 years prior to that, that was it. You know, you got away with it, you got away with it. And yeah, not no now more. We have. Internet remembers everything. The internet remembers it definitely everything. has democratized. Off democratized. Off of yeah, definitely. And I mean, I mean it's, it's cool, but it's, it's scary too because, you know, now your kids, they don't really get to have that same learn and not be held accountable for the just growing up, you know? Right. I hope yeah. we become more forgiving about stuff like that, though. Like, I hope that, you know, we do recognize that just like we had age appropriate fun, but we didn't have the Internet. You got to yeah. let these kids who who do live in in the Snapchat, you know, Twitter age and, and, and are coming up that you got to let them have their space to do what kids do and give them some measure of forgiveness in that as well i hope i you know i hope we evolve i think you know the conversation sur surrounding how you apologize and how you make amends when you do something stupid you know we got room as far as that goes but i do hope that we give these kids a chance because the pressure to be publicly perfect is not something that we want to put on the either you know this idea that you can never say a wrong thing you can never do a wrong thing and that it's somehow going to ruin you forever um if you do i don't think we want that you know that's not you know we don't want the pendulum to swing there either so i, I hope we find a way to to do better um and just educate people I, my kids are you know middle school age now they take um as a part of their health curriculum um, about responsible social media use. Um, they're super embarrassed that their mom is, is speaking on that at career day. <laughs> super <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, they mad. They already mad. My son is like, what? You coming to my school as a speaker? Yeah, he, they, he wants no parts of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I you know, I think it's great that they're they're talking to them about it but i think you also have to recognize they're going to do stupid stuff anyway because that's what kid, kids do stupid stuff so yeah. i hope we find a way to to teach them how to be responsible but then also leave them room to act age appropriately so agreed this was great I'm right. excited. This is fun. I like this. We so smart. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Like, <laughs> so dang smart. I'm just wow. like, damn. I feel like I'm at the big table. I feel but, so grown and, right now. I'm about and to the like, best part about it is that we threw this together in uh in what a in a ten IG minute DM. in a yeah in an IG yeah, DM yeah. exchange over like ten minutes. Like, let's do That's this. True. Let's do this. And yeah, how we doing, doing it? Long. Yeah, it was. It you know sometimes it don't take all that to j just put together it's a, a quick burst of brilliance. I love it. This is dope. Yes. This, is, this is. I'm excited, and I'm ready for next week. Yeah, that's you. That's that's ready. that's your I'm thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna wear a suit next week. I'm, okay, I'm not gonna wear a whole suit. I'm gonna wear like a tie from this way. Y'all don't know what I'm wearing. <laughs> Y'all can't see. Me. All right. I'm gonna come in. I'm being full professor mode. I'm only gonna respond to Dr. McNeil. I can't, be a I can't even. <laughs> I can't take. <laughs> nah, it's I'm definitely um, it's 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 it has to be discussed, especially for us in HR. I feel like that's a new that's a thing this year is this cybersecurity thing. 
I'm excited. Talking about that. I told I told y'all I pretend to be a HR tech person for real now because of y'all's uh, our interactions. You might. And, uh, it's really funny because there's a lot of people are like, "Man, you like really on this HR game." I'm like, "Yep." And I shoot, what are you like? A quick question. <laughs> hey, how do I say this? And I and then I like go in super confident. To actually, <laughs> we're looking at the entire life cycle of. <laughs> I've trained you so well. My <laughs> <laughs> so good awesome. people. <laughs> yeah. oh, it, it's it's really cool. I love I love technology. I love this space, and um, and yeah, it's it's been really really in- amazing. Like I'm really glad that I met y'all. It was divinely orchestrated. And I met to be Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of the Ask Serena Live after show and join us next week after Ask Serena Live for more smart banter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. All right, good night. Bye.